the second thing is the, uh, is the, is the master of your work. The Lord Jesus Christ is the true master. He is the superintendent of your world life. And what he has done in, in providence is that he sets tasks of work for you with timelines. Whether you, you realize it or not, you're constantly working against various timelines or deadlines. Everything is time-bound. Your very life is time-bound. So, the Lord will ultimately come to, to you or you will appear before him and you'll have to give an account of what you've done in the body, whether good or evil. And the Lord will either approve it or condemn it. But meanwhile, God has given you sufficient resources to faithfully manage your time, your talents, your treasures, so that you yield glory to him. And what this assumes is that a non-believer is not going to be a faithful steward. He can't be. The Lord isn't his savior. The Lord isn't his Lord. Therefore, he isn't his master. And so, a non-believer is constantly thinking of me, myself, and I. And because of common grace, they may think about their, their spouses, their children, their relatives, their friends, their colleagues. But essentially, even where they serve their own relatives, they're thinking about their own glory. It's all tinted with sin. And it's not acceptable to God, even though it may be acceptable to man. The most philanthropic non-believer is not charitable at all before God. Because he's doing it all for himself. So the Lord expects a Christian to work. Uh, uh, he expects a Christian to work in such a way that he is promoting his glory and the good of himself and others. And so he demands and expects Christian work ethic from believers. That they will be honest both in work and in reward. And what this means then, uh, if I may then very practically tell you what this means is that you actually don't need your team leader or your supervisor or your boss or your employer to be there for you to deliver or to give you deadlines for you to deliver or to issue threats for you to deliver. You don't need that. And so... God in Proverbs says, you sluggard, look at the ant. She has no, what are the uh, three people who are not needed? Chief, officer, or, or a king. The thing is, if you're going to need supervision for you to work, you actually are not fearing the Lord because the Lord is right there seeing what you're doing. So, uh, which means then that uh, unnecessary tabs don't need to be on your computer so that you close them quickly as soon as the team leader or the supervisor passes around. And that's why I, 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 I thank God for COVID. What has happened is that uh, now the employers have allowed many people to work from their homes. And now, the threat of time, dead, deadlines are upon you. Those are the dogs that have been set upon those who are working at home. You're given task, and it's for you to deliver within particular timelines. But surely, if the Lord Jesus Christ is your master, is his spirit is present with you wherever you are, why do you need supervision? So the Bible says here that, you are serving the Lord. It is the Lord who will 
give you the reward based on how you have performed. The Bible says here, verse 25, here in Colossians 3, for the wrongdoer will be paid back for the wrong he has done. And there's no partiality. And Paul hammers this point so clearly to the Ephesians. He says, slaves, obey your masters with fear and trembling, with sincere heart, as you would Christ, not by the way of high service, as people please us, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, rendering service with a good will as to the Lord and not to man, knowing that whatever good anyone does, this will, he will receive back from the Lord, where, whether he is a slave or free. Okay, so please don't tell me that well, you don't understand. I am only a junior officer. And my work is very difficult. That's why, you know, I'm struggling to be a good steward of my time. Because my bosses are overbearing and too demanding. The Lord says, whether free, whether slave or free. Regardless of your circumstances, you can be a faithful steward by the grace of God. So that the manner of your work is heartly. The master of your work is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the motivation for your work is the reward that Christ gives, the inheritance. And this is the reason, uh, and I think we need to look at it as God's grace. Uh, I don't, not I think, but it is God's grace that uh, the Lord has not only, you know, uh, required us to be stewards, but he has given us motivation for it, that there would be reward for what we do. Uh, we don't deserve any reward. If, you know, if all we did was without remuneration, we would be serving the Lord and it would suffice. But the Lord in his grace has given us motivation in, in, in all, form, for all forms of motivation. Here on earth, and thereafter, um, you get praise for what you do. You are thanked for what you do. You are paid for what you do. You are even promoted for what you do to, uh, to affirm good stewardship. Now, I know that this can be uh, shortchanged here on earth. But surely, the Lord does say in his word that uh, even the evil do appreciate the good done by Christians, as Peter recounts. So the main motivation then for work, I need to say, has nothing to do with us. The first motivation for your work has nothing to do with your salary or your savings. The first motivation for your work <clears throat> is God's glory. It is pleasing God, pleasing Christ. It is serving the Lord. This is the first motivation for your work. Whether you are a cleaner or a soldier, whether you are a graphic designer or a web designer, whether you are a pastor or a policeman, whoever you are, whether an accountant or an auditor, the work that you do, you are doing it for Christ, first and foremost. And if it is for Christ, <clears throat> then you need to ask yourself whether he is pleased. And you see, what this means then is that <clears throat> the means to the end are very, very vital, very, very essential if your master is going to be pleased. All this pragmatic approach to work, that the end justifies the means, it's not, it's not going to fly. It's not going to be acceptable before the Lord. The Lord is very keen and interested in finding out how did you arrive at the equation? How did you get your degree? Was it through cheating? Was it through some dishonest, other-hearted 
means? If it is, sorry. It's not going to be acceptable. And so you need to ask yourself, who is Christ to you? Is he just a founder of the Christian faith? A good moral teacher, many people say. Or is he your savior who has redeemed you from the blackness and the darkness of your sins? Is he the one who has conveyed you from, from the domain of darkness into the marvelous light of his kingdom? Has he really delivered you? Because if he has then you would seek to please him as your master. You'd seek to serve him. And you'd seek to honor him and to glorify his name. So the motivation for your work is first and foremost to please God, to glorify Christ, to honor him as the Lord and Savior of your life. <laughs> 